Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, myself Chirag. In this video, I am going to discuss about web security threats and approaches. Topic of network security. Let's check the outline of this video. The first topic is introduction of web security and threats. The second one is classification of web security threats. The third one is discuss web security threats. And the fourth one is web traffic security approaches. Before start this video, let's subscribe me on YouTube. And all the video materials are available on my blog. Follow my blog chirakbalodia.com. Let's start with the first topic, introduction of web security and threats. So now start with what is web security. Web security refers to network, computer system and data are protected from unauthorized person or group. It is called web security. It means whenever you access information from the internet at that time, your network, computer system and data must be secure. Now discuss purpose of web security. The purpose of web security is to prevent security attack like passive attack and active attack. Here I am giving some example of active and passive attack that all are web security threats. It is like modification of message. The next one is denial of services, phishing, SQL injection and malwares. There are different number of malwares are present in internet like virus, worms, trojans, ransomware, botnets, adware, spyware and many more. So that all are threats. So using web security, we can protect our network, data and computer system against that kind of threat. Later on in this video, I will discuss these threats in detail. Next, how can achieve web security? Nowadays, there are various tools and technologies are available to achieve web security. So let's discuss some of the tools and technology to achieve web security. The first one is web and network firewall. Web application firewall sets between your website server and the data connection. The purpose is to read every bit of data that passes through it and to protect your site. Network firewall is set between your network device and your computer system. It is used to filter the incoming and outgoing data in the network. Web firewall protect your website and network firewall protect your network. The next one is keep your software up to date. If your website software or applications are not up to date, your site is not secure. Updates are vital to the health and security of your website. Take all software and plugin update request seriously. Also use HTTPS and SSL certificate to secure your website. The next one is backup your data. Backup of your website regularly. You should maintain backups of all your website files in case your site becomes inaccessible or your data is lost from the server. Next one is keep your website clean. Every databases, applications or plugins on your website is another possible point of entry for hackers. You should delete any files, databases or applications from your website that are no longer in use. Next one is strong password policy. It is important to use strong passwords to protect against root force. Passwords should be complex, containing uppercase and lowercase letters, numbers and special characters. Your password should be at least 10 characters long. Also apply this policy with your organizations. The next one is password cracking tools. Password cracking tools help to restore the lost password. Whether you have forgot your password or your password has been hacked, a password cracking tools can help you recover your password. The next one is scan your website for vulnerabilities. It is important to regularly perform web security scans to check for website and server vulnerabilities. Web security scans should be performed on a scheduled basis and after any changes or addition to your web components. And the last one is use antivirus. Antivirus software helps protect your computer against malwares and other incoming threats. Antivirus software looks at data like web pages, files, software, applications, which are traveling over the network to your devices. Antivirus searches for known threats and monitors the behavior of all programs and flagging suspicious behavior. So these are some examples of tools and technologies to achieve web security. Nowadays, many more tools and technologies are also available on internet. Next, what are web security threats? Web security threats are vulnerabilities within website and applications or attacks launched by malicious users. Web security threats are designed to breach security of website or applications. 
so here i am discuss some of the example of web security threats the first one is modification of message message should not be altered during the transmission so it is called there is no integrity in the message if message has been changed during the transmission it is also called as data breach it means some confidential and sensitive information gets exposed so it is one kind of biggest threat in the internet next denial of services it is also known as ddos distributed denial of services denial of services is a web security threat that involves attackers flooding servers with large volume of internet traffic to disrupt service and take website offline website is inaccessible for other users the next example of threat is phishing phishing attack targeting users through email text message or social media messaging sites attackers impersonate as a real user or real website so users can trust that and click on given link and provide the sensitive information like account number credit or debit card data and login credentials through the phishing attack user can lose their money as well as sensitive information the another example of web security threat is sql injection sql stands for structured query language sql is used to search and query databases nowadays phishing and sql injection is a most popular web security threats sql injection is the placement of malicious code in sql statement via web page input using sql injection hacker can retrieve user credentials and some sensitive informations through the sql query in web pages another example of web security threats is malware malware stands for malicious software malware comes in so many variants there are number of methods to infect computer systems malware is a file or code typically delivered over a network that infects explores steals or conduct virtual any behavior an attacker wants so these are the web security threats which is most popular nowadays next classification of web security threats basically web security threats are classified based on security attack it may be a passive or active attack another way to classify web security threats is in terms of location the first one is web servers the second one is web browsers and the third one is network traffic web server and web browser falls into the category of system security and network traffic is under web security so in this video i have discuss about web security threats now discuss web security threats here we are discuss web security threats based on security goals if you want to learn about security goals then click on above i button also discuss consequences and countermeasures of web security threats so let's start with integrity integrity means message should not be altered during the transmission if message is altered it means the integrity is break so how threats break the integrity the first one is modification of user data the another way is modification of memory and the other method is modification of message traffic in transit after break the integrity there are so many consequences the first one is loss of information the second one is compromise of machine and the third one is vulnerability to all other threats so here loss of information means modification of users data the compromise of machine is modification of memory so integrity is break it means the vulnerability to all other threats are increased so how to counter this threats using the cryptographic checksums so here there is one question what is cryptographic checksum before sender sending a data generate a checksum and that checksum is append with message and send to the receiver at the receiver end receiver receive that message and generate a checksum if receiver's checksum and appended checksum which was generated by the sender if both are same it means there is no integrity in the message and receiver accept that message the next one is confidentiality confidentiality means the message should be known by only sender and receiver so there are some threats to destroy the confidentiality the first one is eves dropping on the internet eves dropping means someone listen your conversation on internet but you don't know about that the next one is theft of information from the server the another one is theft of data from client the next one is information about network configuration if attacker or hacker can get the information about network configuration then they can capture the message from your network and destroy the confidentiality of data the next one is information about which client talks to server 
So this is one kind of passive attack. If confidentiality is brief, then the consequences are loss of information. So here loss of information means attacker and hacker can get all the information of client from the server as well as capture the messages between server and client will communicate. The another consequences is loss of privacy. It means when server and client will communicate at that time attacker or hacker can capture that message and know the secret information or messages from the communication. That is called loss of privacy of particular message. So how to protect this threat using the encryption and use of web proxies or you can use private VPN in your organization. The next one is denial of services. Denial of services means interruption in an authorized user to access web services or network. It is called denial of services. The threats to denial of services are first one is killing of user threads. When the communication between server and client is going on, at that time server and client are disconnected. It is called killing of user threads. The next one is flooding machine with bogus requests. So it means attacker and hacker can access the server and continuously send a bogus request to the server. So after sometimes server is full of request and server goes down. Next, filling of disk or memory. If number of requests are sent by the attacker or hacker at that time the server's disk or memory is full. So it means server is shut down after some time and disconnected from the network. The next one is isolating machine by DNS attacks. If any loopholes in DNS, then attacker can attack DNS tunneling, DNS spoofing and DNS flood attack and the services of the server is denied. The consequences of the denial of services is disruptive. So user cannot access the server. So it is annoying to the user. And the next one is prevent user from getting work done. It means user cannot access any data from particular server and cannot submit any data to the server. So denial of services is difficult to prevent. The next one is authentication. Authentication is a process to verify user's identity. So the threats are impersonation of legitimate users. Impersonation means fake website or fake user act as a real user or real website. So it is one kind of phishing attack. The next one is data forgery. Data forgery means some fake user act as a real user and send some link to the user. So user can click on that link and give the information. So it means attacker or hacker can get the user's information. So it is called data forgery. So the consequences are misrepresentation of user because of impersonation of legitimate users. And the next one is belief that false information is valid. So how to protect these threats? To achieve the authentication, cryptographic techniques are hash function, message authentication code, digital signature and digital certificates. Next, there are the comparison of web security threats. For further discussion, you can join my telegram group Chirag Balodia. Link is given in description. And this video material is available on my blog chiragbalodia.com. Let's discuss web security approaches. A number of approaches to providing web security are possible. The various approaches that have been considered are similar in the services and the mechanisms that they are used. But it may be differ with respect to their scope of applicability and their relative location within the TCP IP protocol stack. So here we are discuss web security approaches with reference to TCP IP protocol stack. So first one is network level, the second one is transport level and the third one is application level. So now discuss all these three security approaches one by one in detail. The first one is network level. In network level web security can be achieved through IP address because only internet protocol is used in network layer. So web security is based on internet protocol is called as IPsec. It is called IP security. Advantage of IPsec is that it is transparent to end users and application and provide a general purpose solution. The another advantage of IPsec is filtering capability so that only selected traffic need incur the overhead of IP security processing. So what I have discussed in network level is written over here in this slide. You can read from this slide. The next one is transport level security. In transport level security, the general purpose solution is implemented the security just above the TCP. The example of this approach is SSL and TLS. SSL stands for secure socket layer and TLS stands for transport layer security. Advantage of SSL is 
transparent to application because transport layer is provide process to process delivery in the network. Another advantage of SSL can be embedded in specific packages. For example, Netscape and Internet Explorer is equipped with SSL and most browsers have implemented the protocol. So what I have discussed in transport layer security is written in this slide. You can read from this slide. Next one is application level security. In application level security, it provides application specific security services that are embedded within particular application. For example, you are sending a mail with multimedia file. It provides that security based on SMTP and MIME protocol. Advantage of this approach is service can be tailored to the specific needs of an application. So what I have discussed in application level is written in this slide. So you can read from this slide. For further query, you can join my telegram group Chirag Balodia. The link is given in description. Video material is available in my blog chiragbalodia.com. If you like this video, please hit the like button and share with others. Don't forget to subscribe my channel. Follow me on social media. All the links are given in description. Thank you for watching this video.